we have massive stories to discuss this Christmas Eve. In today's video, we talk Benoit Badia show. As reported by The Athletic, it seems like we are turning our attentions towards signing the young defender for around £30 million. This is crazy news. And to end things, we talk the futures around imminent new young signings like David Fofana and Andre Santos as we learn about their potential loans out once they sign for us in January. So we have a ton of things to break down and discuss today. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope everyone's having a great day. Everyone's feeling them festive vibes and I hope you have a great Christmas tomorrow as well too. So if you like today's video, hit that like button and please share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section too. Before we get into anything, let me get one massive plug out of the way first. Today's video is brought to you by friends of the channel in one football. Now with today's breaking news suggesting that we are turning our focus to Benoit Badia Shul. This is where OneFootball can be a very handy app to use if you want to find out more information surrounding the player. Once you download OneFootball, you click on Discover, you type in the name of the player, and once you've done so, you can press the Start option to get all the latest up-to-date news and transfer news. So I'm now following Benoit Badiashil. I go back to my profile page, I click See More, scroll down, and there I find Benoit Badiashil, where I can get an understanding behind stats like his age, his height, and how his season is currently going so far as well too, where you can get a bit of an understanding behind his defensive actions and stats as well too. So for me, this is another great example behind why One Football is the app to have if you are an avid football fan. So download One Football. You'll find a link below in the description and in the top comment too. Now let's start things off and let's discuss long plans around David Fofana. Andre Santos and Gabriel Salina in January. Now, as we're getting close now to actually finalizing and wrapping up these deals for both Santos and Fofana, with Fofana completing his medical in London last night, the announcement will come probably first week in January. I guess the question on all our minds was, what do we do now? Will these guys be integrated into the first team? Are these players going to be maybe playing under 23 games as well as training with the first team? I mean, so many thoughts and opinions, but it seems like the reality is, well, based on reports from the Evening Standard, it seems like both players alongside Gabriel Salina will be loaned out in January. I guess maybe realistically, this was the option that we all should have actually realized and considered. Knowing that we need to get Champions League football, we have a lot of senior players here that naturally with their big contracts and clauses will be getting minutes. I guess it makes sense that for the second half of the season, they get consistent minutes elsewhere. Now, in my opinion, I'd love if one of these guys can play in the Portuguese League because for me, the Portuguese League constantly produces players worth up to like 100 million, 50 mil plus. And traditionally, there's only like maybe four like big teams there consistently challenging for league titles and most of the clubs of a lower level. I think the culture of Portuguese football, how they prioritize playing attacking football, I think it's a very like healthy league environment where young players can develop, grow and improve their games. Now, I guess it's unfortunate that we haven't really started with the multi-club network plans. Ideally, if you're signing young talents like this, you want to keep them within your network. You want to loan them out to your affiliate clubs. And I hope that over the next few seasons, we can really strike deals with great affiliate clubs to give any young players we sign the best possible footballing education in a fair and safe environment. Because I stress that, yeah, because normally with loans, for me, they're not always like the be all and end all to really judge and assess the quality and talent of a football player. For example, there are a ton of variables that can work against a player for reasons outside their means. For example, let's say you've gone to a loan club, the manager persuaded you to sign for them, and then he gets sacked two months into the season. A new guy comes in with different plans. He wants to try and just like safeguard himself. He might prioritize the guys that have been bought by the club and the senior players over a loan player that means nothing to him at this point in time. Maybe, for example, you might not get on with your new teammates. You might need more time to acclimatize your new environment, your new surroundings. I mean, there's so many variables that can maybe potentially affect development. So, so I'm not too sure, you guys. Maybe I should get some confidence from the fact that both Fofana and Santos have signed for us based on the fact that we have given them clear ideas about their development pathway into the first team. You'd imagine that with top talents like this, they'll sign for us if they have confidence that there is real belief that they will have plans to get into the first team. So I guess time will tell. Let's see what happens. And of course, by the time the next season starts and when preseason starts again during the summer, maybe we might see guys like Santos or Fofana 
having that opportunity to try and win a place in the squad for next season. But let's see what happens. How do you feel about this? Are you a bit disappointed to not see either of these guys getting an opportunity for now? Or do you think it's part of the plan? We should trust the new management and let's see how everything plays out. So right now, let's focus on the breaking story this evening reported by The Athletic. And they report that we are keen on signing Benoit Badiashil for Monaco. Now, for long-term viewers of my channel, Badiashil is not a new name for you. This is a player that has been on our scouting radars now for a few seasons, ever since he made his debut as a 17-year-old when Thierry Henry was their manager. So, so this guy has had a ton of hype around his name for many good reasons. I mean, he's left-footed, he's tall, he's fast, he can play on the ground. He's very good defensively 1v1 and he has presence in the air too. So you can see why many big clubs across Europe have their eyes on Badi Ashil. Anyway, let's go back to the athletic reports. They're basically reporting that we want a new left-sided centre-back desperately and Badi Ashil is the leading candidate at this point in time now. Now I guess this news is quite logical but equally surprising at the same time. Uh, even though we actually reached personal term agreements with Gavardio. It seems like due to the fact that RB Leipzig are continuously now just, you know, pushing this value higher and higher and higher. Now, realistically, is it wise to spend 100 million on a centre-back right now when we need to fill other positions in this team? I'm not too sure. Realistically, we aren't going to sign three players worth 100 million in one window. That won't happen. So I guess... You need to make sacrifices in certain areas. And maybe the club may feel Benoit Badiashil for his talent and for his fee as well too makes more economical sense to target over Gavardio and then we can reinvest the surplus money into other needed positions, probably like midfield because reports are saying that both Kante and Jorginho may be leaving on freeze at the end of this window. So you can kind of understand the conundrum that we are currently in. But anyway, getting back to reports, the Athletic state that we have looked at other left-sided players, most notably guys from the Bundesliga. So Ndika, who I think is available on a free, as well as Hinkapi, who plays as like a left-back slash defender for Bayer Leverkusen. Now to continue on with the Athletic reports, they're reporting that we are talking to Monaco about signing him right now. And it's reported that we are close to agreeing a fee of around £30 million to sign Badi Ashil. Now, we have brought in two staffing additions from RB Leipzig and Monaco. You know, from Monaco, that was Paul Stewart. And from Leipzig, that was Christopher Vivelle. So is it any surprise that we look at players that the new staff additions know very well? I don't think so. Now, I've got a ton of questions arising after this news broke. But before I get into that, let's actually talk about Badia Shul's game so some of you guys can get an understanding behind why we target him in the first place. Now, at 21 years old, I think he's like 6'5 or 6'4, left footed and with tons of experience at a very young age. I think already he's accumulated over like 130 career appearances already at 21 years old, Badia Shil could be a wise and interesting option. Of course, we know with our new owners, they are really pushing data and analytics to help us in identifying talents to improve the team. Like realistically, is a Gavardio worth three times more than Badia Shil? I'm not too sure. But anyway, Badia Shil is left-footed. He's tall. The guy is fast. He's got great acceleration. He's a proactive style defender and he has great thinking. Uh, his defensive stats, he ranks very high for interceptions and he ranks high for personal duels too because he will leave his defensive line to engage with his opposition higher up the fields. And I think that makes a lot of sense for a Graham Potter team. Now, recently under Potter, I've seen that he wants the defenders to leave their defensive line to follow the opposition striker, even if that striker goes back into their own half. He wants to close all passing options to stop any counter-attacks that could affect us. And I think that if you want to play like this, you want to sign profiles who have that instinct to play like this, who are comfortable in being proactive and know when to leave their lines and when to engage. So realistically, knowing that we need to invest heavily to fill other positions in the team, maybe it does make more sense to target a Badia Shield over a Gavardio. But anyway, I guess right now, I want to actually give some thoughts and opinions before I end with things. And I guess most notably, I think of players like Levi Cole and I think of players like Kula Bali. Now in Serie A, reports are suggesting that many clubs there are keeping their eyes out on Kula Bali. It's been reported in this country that we aren't as impressed with his performances so far and rumours are surfacing that he could be sold in the next window. 
Let's see what happens and let's see if Koulibaly can come back stronger for the second half of the season. At the same time, where does this leave Colwell and what are our actual plans for the young defender? Now recently he's finally broken into that Brighton team and he's putting in some very impressive performances at 19 years old. Now he fits the mould we need. Tall, fast, left footed, plays exceptional passes from deep, line breaking passes, progressive passes can carry that ball forward. He is dominant aerially as well too, very very good for his age and he ranks very high for personal duels as well too. So some people may be thinking, why are we even spending 100 mil on Gavardio or even 30 million on Badia Shil when we could give the opportunity to Colwell to show what he can do? Uh, I definitely get that. But at the same time, I feel like the club are slowly trying to revamp our defence to get them ready for the next decade. Fana recently signed, and you'd imagine guys like Thiago Silva won't be here forever, and maybe players like Koulibaly could decide to leave too. So that doesn't necessarily mean that both Cole and Badia Shil couldn't be in the same squad together, especially if Badia Shil is the replacement for a Gavardio. A lot of us spoke about Gavardio before and how Cole could still play with him, so I think in principle, things shouldn't be too different. Even though Badia Shil is an exceptional talent at the same time, due to his age, he can still be susceptible to youthful inexperience. Wrong decision making at the wrong time, maybe like feeling the pressure in certain moments, not having mental clarity fully, making the silly mistake at times which is bound to happen at this age. And I think for me personally, I've always wondered, okay, what makes someone like a Badia Shil more attractive compared to your own homegrown talent in Cole, knowing that they're both of the finished products, they both need game time to improve, why does one signing get more priority compared to a player that you produce for free at your club? Uh, I'm not too sure, I don't have the answers, but regardless though, Badia Shield for 30 million, Cole on the three, one of them will have to make it ideally, and it wouldn't be that expensive for us to test out to see who could be the winner for that left hand side. So, very interesting reports, I feel like we're so very interesting reports let's see what happens you guys share your thoughts and opinions are you a bit annoyed that we might not go for Gavardio are you happy with Badia Shil are you concerned with Coral let us know how you're feeling about today's mad news so on that note I'm Nini FC the Sis Blue Lines CV I'll catch you guys later with some more videos and if I'm not about tomorrow I hope you guys have an amazing Christmas if you don't celebrate that then I hope you guys just have a good day tomorrow anyway I'll catch you guys soon cool